With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. And now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about the collapse of News Hub and the media in general. I'm expecting this buddy session to be as brutal as it will be honest. My producer has them all lined up, ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome back to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you again. Oh, hi, Cam. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Fantastic. Hey, I've got an interesting topic for you tonight. Um, there's been a lot of wailing in the media about the collapse of News Hub, and oh. I wanted to ask your opinion on that and the general state of the media uh, in general. I'm sure you've got some very wise words to say to those wailing journalists. Well, I can't understand the wailing, but I've got two words for this. We can sum it up in two words. Contrived and gone. Yep. And that and... absolutely sums it up because mainstream media is contrived, false, and many people are sick of it. And they've got new online choices now that they never had before. Yep, they've got Reality Check Radio for a start. Indeed. And we can listen to very, very extensive interviews that are straight from the coalface, no interrupts from the interviewers, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So what do you reckon they can learn? I mean, or will they learn, or are they just slow learners? I don't think they can learn. Um, I mean, think of this. Cave walls, clay tablets, smoke signals, Morse code. With time, News things hub. change, don't they? News How hub. come they never saw this coming? Well, I've been because saying it for years it's going to happen this way. At lineal TV, uh, where we've all got to watch according to the schedule they decide for us, has been long dead. We consume our media in many, many different ways, often through iPads, or through their computer, um, you know, they've persisted in this outdated method of delivery of, of information. And it's often four or five days late anyway. Well, you're absolutely right. TV's dead in the water. And like you say, it has been for years. I mean, you could see the, the um, dying spiral, you know. I can't understand how they never saw it because if they class themselves as journalists, and some investigative journalists, they couldn't even investigate their own demise, and yet it was right in front of their eyes, and they've completely failed to adapt. If they had realised it, they could have thought of something innovative, you know, to take its place and take their viewers on, <coughs> viewers or listeners onto that, but they failed that, didn't they? And well, now they're shocked. That's what I can't get over. I think, do you know what I think is the most shocking thing of all? That they've got their hand the out that for they government are shocked. <laughs> oh, it's just unbelievable. And, well, and it's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, I can't believe that their overflated egos actually think that they have an amazing product. It's an awful product. And I used to watch it years ago, and I can no longer watch it. I turn it off. So... I'm just an ordinary person, you know, that represents the average Joe Bloggs, really. Um, other people turn it off too. And, you know, the absolute inane hilarity and in kindergarten style of delivery is beyond belief. Do they think that's viewable? It's like story time for children. Well, is it just they, me that think thinks they, that? No, I don't think it's just you that thinks that. And, and I think in increasing numbers, people have been turned off uh, both TVNZ and uh, News Hub, for receiving their news. I mean, often stories that they run are four or five days old. Then they put a particular slant on it, and you think, well, hang on a second. I read that, uh, you know, somewhere else around the world four or five days ago, and that's not the impression I got from that story. And they've been pushing these well, agendas I mean, of to... various minor groups of people in New Zealand as though it's normal, you know, and it's not. I know, 
And I've got a beauty on that one. That this is this was actually the point that turned me around on the media, and they won't like to know that it involved Donald Trump. They won't like that. But um, I happened to be watching um, Fox, and uh, Trump came on, and as he often did, he whistled up to the um, journalists and had a chat straight off the cuff. And this is what he said. To some people, COVID is just a cold. To others, it is life-threatening. Now, the very next day, all over our news, in fact, all over the world news, it said, Trump says COVID is just a cold. Yeah. Now, that is not what he said. It is totally misrepresenting what he said. And it was accompanied with a photo of Trump looking as ridiculous as is possible. And this is how they shape our minds. So just from that one item, they persuade people to think Trump's an idiot, COVID is very serious, ooh, fear, and we must watch the next episode because it's like a soap opera. Well, they're just liars, they just lie through and through, and they have a format, which I'm sure you're aware of. So we sort of have the newsreader's headline, which captures our attention, and then we have a journalist lead-in, don't we, which sets our emotion for what's to follow. Yeah. And then we have the video, which shows the evidence, and that's often staged. And then the journalist closes, usually in a fairly fatalistic tone, and we suck up the whole item as fact. Well, the bad news for them is a lot of people have woken up to that now and they don't want to watch it. They don't want people telling lies to them. No, people have had enough and they've been saying it for a very long time. And these journalists and media people all turn around and say, oh, you know, trust is falling in the media. We need the government to do something about it. They never once stop to think that perhaps the trust in media falling is as a result of their dishonesty and their um, lack of integrity in the way they deal with things. They always say things like, oh, this journalist is a fantastic storyteller. Well, I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid <clears throat> and I was telling fibs to my father, he'd say to me, you're telling <laughs> stories again, aren't you? You know, and, and that's, <laughs> yes. these journalists are all running around telling us that they tell great stories. Well, in my head, I just hear they tell great lies. Yes. Uh, well, you know, you and thousands of others. But, you know, you know how I love these little one-liners, don't you? I've mm. got one for that. Yeah. Thou shalt not bear false witness. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good, very good one-liner. But they've just yeah. ignored their audience. They've carried on uh, doing their activism because you can't call it journalism. And, no. And then they're all surprised when there aren't enough viewers to support their lavish lifestyles and um, uh, all of a sudden they've gone from hero to zero or rooster to feather duster. I know. And the incredible thing is they're not surprised, Cam. They're shocked, quote. Yeah. Yeah. They're shocked. I mean, I saw that man on, on um, he was crying. I think he's the head of the whole shebang. He was yeah. crying and he said he was shocked. Shocked. Well, shocked. Yeah. Yeah. He was shocked and he was crying, you know. Is this, well, I, I'm, I mean, I do feel sorry for the people that have lost their jobs, but hey, they never felt sorry for certain people that lost their jobs three or four years ago. No, they never did. You know, they, they, they have never... reported on misery and human suffering with gay abandon. And then they're, cons you know, shocked, as you say, shocked that the audience yeah. has disappeared on them. You know, we're all sitting here snickering yeah. and laughing at them. I just think it's just incredible. And, I mean, one of the most amazing things in recent times was Winston Peters, who, who they bag, you know, at every opportunity. And when he called them out on the government funding thing, they disgracefully lied. And I've seen a copy of the funding document, and it states that they must promote colonisation and its negative effect on Maoris. They must promote climate change. And if they don't, their funding will be called back in again. Yeah, it's clear in black and white. And they stood up there in, res 
Yeah, they stood up there um, in response to Winston Peters calling them out, and they said there was no government influence. He was a liar. Yeah, but that's right. People are waking up to this. Well, they're going to be waking up you know, to, to not having um, these uh, fools gaslighting us, and, and and that's really what News Hub were. They were an organisation that gaslit us, especially during the COVID years. They were, the, you know, Ardern's happy little minstrels um, that were gleefully singing along. We had little Tova there, always got the first questions, and if it wasn't Tova, it was Jessica. It was so yeah. blatant, <laughs> you know. So blatant, and then they sit there and go, what happened? Yeah, well, like I said, really, the one word for them is contrived right the way through, even for that. And I'll tell you what, if people are listening at the moment, if they don't believe us, um, I challenge anyone to get on any MSM in New Zealand at the moment and to openly express their concerns about, say, the COVID vax and the possible side effects of myocarditis, et cetera. They'll never get on. Because the the result will be either they'll be totally discredited or they'll be cut off. Yeah. You know? And you've so, got other so radio the, hosts who call anybody with with the views that we have cookers and abuse us and, and things like that. You know, he's just... I know, they are viciously, one, viciously one-eyed, they are. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, I just can't watch it. I like if there's uh, sort of a, an event, maybe there's a um, forest fire heading towards my house or something. I, I might switch it on to have a you know an update. But even then, I have found a Christchurch source of news, Chris Chris Lynch news. Yep. Yep. Um, and people have taken to watching that because it's just news. It's just authentic. It's not grooming our minds for political agenda. Well, the other thing too And is I think if, that's if, what... If you look at Reality Check Radio, we, we interview all sorts of people. We, now, we don't necessarily agree with their point of view. I certainly don't agree with the majority of, of, the, of the guests that I have on my show, but we let them speak and we let them talk and we let them uh, answer questions and we don't shut them off and machine gun them with a hidden agenda of trying to make um, the politician or, or, or indeed any guest just to destroy them. We're there to listen to what they've got to say, and it's the job of the host to ask sensible, pertinent questions that will get more information to the listeners. Well, that's exactly what it is, and that's why people enjoy it, um, and I do. I mean, I've got past children's stories, and um, I actually want to hear something fairly extensive um, and highly detailed, and that's what I get out of it. And they seem to always have people right from the coalface. It's you know, there's no person in between. We're talking to the actual person um, concerned with the event or whatever it is, and that's what I really appreciate. And then I can sit back and make up my own mind, um, you know, what I think of them, and, and form my own opinion. I'm not having my opinion formed for me. Uh, yeah, exactly. I I mean, that, that's... People don't understand the dishonesty that occurs in the mainstream media. I'll give you a good example, and it involves me. There was an article two weeks ago about me. It was published at 12.28 p.m., you know, just after lunch. And 10 minutes later, yeah. I got an email from the journalist asking me for comment on the story they're about to publish, which was already published. And in the bottom <laughs> line of the article, they say, we've approached Mr. Slater for comment. Right, so they're, they're, they're <laughs> yeah. deceiving their readers that these people have contacted me before they published the article, and they didn't. Yes, and I can prove it, and they've done it time and time and time again. They're just dishonest, and they and they but do sit you think, there. Do you think that they're capable of learning that that's not wise? It would appear not. No, and and that's the problem is they don't learn, so they then you know it's like if you've got a naughty kid. Back in the day, you used to give them a, a pat on the back low enough and hard enough, and it straightened them out. There's no <laughs> consequences for anything now. There's no consequences for bad behavior. And so people don't learn those lessons, and they keep on perpetuating the issues, that the, 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 the things, that the mistakes that they keep making because they've never been punished for them or never had a consequence for them. That's correct. And, of course, the other consequence they don't get in this case is the budget, you know. If you were running, um, I don't know, a podcast or something, 
and you start to run out of money, you sort of look at how you can uh, improve your act. You don't run out and, and fill up 10 credit cards and keep going. Um, they, they just keep going. I mean, if you look at the losses that they have chalked up, it's absolutely massive, but they've kept on going. So somebody has been financially supporting them, even though their product is not wanted. Exactly. Well, that's no consequences. No, no consequence at all. Well, I better go to Paul. He's waiting on the lines, but thank you very much for for your contribution there, Lindley, and um, I'll talk to you again next week. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. How are you? Very good, thank you. How are yourself? Yeah, box of box of uh, fluffies. Actually, it's uh, you know Thursday afternoon, and and uh, I'm enjoying the radio show, and we've got a good topic to talk about. And I've just had Lindley on, and um, she was scathing of the media. And uh, the, the topic was, uh, what do you think of the failure of News Hub and the media in general? Um, um, I think that's um, a, a great question. And I'm really disappointed at the failure of the News Hub because it's representative of 300 families who are, I guess, stressed and concerned and worried about what's going to happen. And there, that means there's a flood of such people on the market so if there happens to be any other jobs that arise from this they'll be, they'll know that they have their friends and colleagues as applicants mm. and so you'll be competing against each other for what little crumbs there are left and I'm thinking that must be a terrible situation to be in having said that go woke go broke I think there's we, we are not in any doubt as to what happened and why um, people are less interested in watching what they're watching. In, in that, and people don't necessarily get their news from television anymore because they seem to be, in my view, during the pandemic, mouthpieces for propaganda. And they were happy, any time I listened, if something came on about Donald Trump, they had a scathing way that they talked of him. Mm. And they never talked such of Joe Biden, who is in my view, denial. Well, and then whenever they're talking to someone about something that I think is, is, um, is it a boy, is it a girl, who knows, they report in, in the manner that they believe you're supposed to report rather than saying, well, he, he's having a baby. Um, oh, no, he's not. She's having a baby. Or <laughs> they're all this sort of unusual behaviour so that we don't know if we're Arthur or Martha leads people into trusting them less. Now, for some reason, they think we all believe this. Most people I speak to don't believe such things. Now, I might live in a, a very um, circle of people who think like me, but I don't believe so. I, I go to a number of places where I'm the only white face. Yeah. And when we're having discussions about different things, they all seem to be on the same page as, as me regarding many of the subjects that we talk about. But another thing that I think is very interesting is to make that news show go and News Hub go and all that they do, 300 staff. Yeah. If you want to look at what will kill any business, it's an over... In, like, how, how many hours of production did they produce per day for 300 staff? I watch RV Yemeni and he can actually produce... Um, good content every day with himself, a security guard and a cameraman. Yep. And so I'm thinking, well, that's three people. So they'd have to do a hundred times more work than Harvey to be earning what they're earning. And um, I don't believe they do. I, don't, I think Harvey's probably not too dissimilar in output to them in total. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking, I'm thinking, many of the things that they do look like they were going to perhaps struggle. Now, what would I know about business, although I've had a few, and I know that in any, um, what is it, the Pareto principle that... Um, yeah, the 80-20 rule. Uh, what is it? Yeah, 20% yeah, yeah. of the people do 80% of the work. Or if you can, I think it's down to the, the um, square root of the staff who... 90% of the work. Yeah. So 
any time you look at a business, and, and Elon Musk is a, must be a great believer in it because he sacks everybody that's there. They say it's never going to work, and suddenly it's going as good as ever with a tenth of staff. So he must have something right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. The media have sat there moribund, uh, not changing, blaming the audience, blaming everything else uh, as trust has been evaporating before their eyes. And uh, they've been continued to gaslight us on almost anything, like you say about, um, you know, whether a, a man can have a baby or um, a man can chest feed or any of this sort of nonsense. They gaslight yeah. us on that. They gaslit us about vaccines. They gaslit us about uh, uh, safe and effective. And they wonder why we don't trust them. It, it, it's not a surprise. It's a surprise to them, I know, but that's probably because they have their head up their own fundament for most of the time. Well, I found it most interesting. Any any interaction I've had with the media, they have completely misrepresented me. And I mean, you couldn't get more of a misrepresentation. They said that I was a leader of a particular organisation. I'm not even a member of the organisation. Mm. They said at different times that I'm helping this person for the good of Myself, or, and uh, trust me, they were a drain on me and my resources. I was helping them for the good of them because I saw a need. And, and mm. when things make the paper that are just absolutely challenging of a good deed, and, and I know no good deed will go unpunished, I know that. But I look and I think when media are seeing someone who's got a, a mental health issue and what they do is make it so anybody trying to help them becomes a villain, then I'm thinking, well, maybe they aren't such nice people. And I talked to another friend who said, oh, as soon as you've got this or this or this reporter on your case, they're ruthless, they lie, they edit what you say, so you, you almost need to take a video of it yourself. And I see um, different people who... When um, I think it was the BBC were trying to attack Tommy Robinson and they were trying to get people to talk against him and he videoed them being deceptive and completely lying and I'm thinking this is wow stuff and the public want to believe that the news media are telling you what happened. I'm not as interested in opinion pieces, I'm more interested in what happened rather than what you think what happened means. So if you tell me what happened, I can draw my own conclusions. I have a reasonable intellect and you tell me what happened and I can draw my own conclusions. Mm. If you tell me what your slant is, then I'm thinking, well, this is crap. I'm not interested in your slant. What what actually happened? Yeah, I mean, that's so what sometimes, called... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, sometimes these folk, they become the master of their own undoing. And if they've all been to the same university and got their media training so that this is how it is now, then it's not even necessarily their fault, but they've been manipulated as like the um, useful idiots that they are often because they've been doing the bidding of whoever trained the university people to train them in such nonsense. So I just look and I think, whilst there's 300 families, and, and if, if any of them are the patriarch of their family, sometimes you have other families hanging on your success. So mm. it could be even a 1,000 families that have actually got to suffer after June because of what has happened, and I'm, I'm sad about that. But also, the people that are in the industry that are doing this that are going to lose their jobs, I see a number of them think that they might put a, a, um, a thing to Discovery or Disney or whoever it is and say, what about we take it over ourselves? Well, I would suggest to you they're not business people, otherwise they wouldn't have been reporting um, opinion pieces. And the business of business sometimes um, is much harsher in the reality than, than most people think. There's a lot of people at the grassroots level thinking, well, if you do this and this and this, it will work. Well, trust me, other people with greater minds than these have thought of it, and it's not working. So at the end of the day, you look at them and you think, if you want to chuck whatever your asset base is away, then take it on yourself and see if you can have a go. I mean, the, to my mind, 
a media uh, organization's greatest asset is trust. And it is something that should be guarded. It should something that should be cherished. But when it's gone, it's gone. And you can't get it back. And organizations like News Hub or the New Zealand Herald or Stuff have shown us that they can't be trusted. I mean, Stuff has, has an editorial policy of not running any information that's contrary to the climate change narrative that's all agreed to by, you know, the WEF and everybody else. That's the editorial policy. And they'll be the next organization that tips over because they've just got an inherent bias and an inherent dishonesty in everything they do. And the same goes for the New Zealand Herald. You know, um, I've got a, a real beef with a couple of journalists, uh, if you can call them that, at the New Zealand Herald, but it's because of their dishonesty. Well, I think that it ends up playing out over and over again. Like when people have lost their trust, nothing that, like, like um, I was talking to someone recently who was saying that there's likely to be a measles epidemic in the Western world because of the lies that were told about the vaccine that was the um, COVID vaccine, now people are thinking, well, I'm not taking any vaccine. And, and we all know that vaccines are great and good. And, well, well I, I know in my family we took these um, measles and rubella and mumps and all that sort of thing. I know there was a lot of people against it at the time. And many of the diseases of the past have kind of gone away. But this is likely to bring them back because of the lack of trust. And I think the media are complicit in this. And as for companies saying that they can't discuss the other side of an agreement because that's their policy now, the science is settled, that is so not scientific. It's, it's laughable if it wasn't actually so, so sad. But the danger of not allowing free speech, when you don't allow free speech, people die. And the reason I say that is we all have a, someone saying, I've got an idea in our minds. Let's run down the motorway at a, a hundred, um, or 160 kilometers an hour. And then the sensible guy in your mind says, don't do that, you'll get a ticket. Or don't do that, you'll kill yourself. And eventually you work through all decisions that you make with these pros and cons of someone chatting in your mind. Yep. And you kill the one with the bad idea and you do the good idea. And that person... That, 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 that thought that was in your mind is gone. Well, if you can't criticize ideas and have the ideas getting challenged, then instead of killing the idea off, people will lose their lives because of it, because of the lack of free speech. And my belief is more people die of the cold than of the heat in the world, and yep. no one's saying that. And no one's talking, but whilst they're talking about the climate change narrative and stuff, is, I know that they've... Um, said that they're not allowed, the science is settled, so they won't ever publish an editorial to the other side of the equation. Mm. While I'm talking about that nonsense, they're not bringing in human flourishing. So they're not bringing in, if you take away the um, greenhouse gases and this, like all the fossil fuels and this, then no one can heat their homes and they die. They're not, they're not challenging that. And they're not challenging the fact that... Um, even now in the UK, people are of an opinion that they, um, their heating is so expensive that they're not turning it on and people are dying because of it. I mean, it, it, it it's actually gaslighting and it's dishonest. I mean, the, the whole statement about, um, you know, the science is settled just is not how science works. There is no science that's settled, that's settled. You have theories and you test those theories until you either prove that the theory holds or you disprove it by something else happening. There's almost nothing that's actually proved in science. But they did that, and they did that with the vaccine well, the too, safe and effective. You know, it was a lie. Um, and they just pushed that yeah. lie constantly. And you wouldn't hear um, anybody say anything different because they wouldn't allow it. Well, it's like the laws. Laws of gravity exist because, and they call them a law because it's happened a million times plus. So that, but but the, everything else, like the theory of Pythagoras or the theorem of Pythagoras, it, now that works every time as well. But it's not as graphic as a law. So we know science doesn't say the science is settled. Otherwise, everything would be a law instead of a theory. And when when the theory no longer holds, it's not a theory anymore. 
That's right. It, once it's a, not a theory, it's a law. But it's a law because it's been proven. There's not a single law about climate change. Not, not one. And, and all, of the, all of the thousands of predictions of calamity that they've uh, to, you know, said were going to happen, like uh, I think Al Gore said that the, the um, North Pole would be ice-free by 2012, and here we are uh, in 2024, and there's still a whole pile of ice up there. You know, So when does somebody exactly. say Al Gore is a liar? Well, on YouTube, there's a number of things, and I know YouTube isn't the gospel, but on YouTube, there's a number of things you can look up, all the predictions that haven't come true around climate change, and there's a vast number of them with, with people have predicted this will happen by then, and the science says it. Turns out, not true. Yeah, exactly. I've got uh, got somebody else uh, waiting in the queue, uh, Paul, so I'm going to have to call the the call short now and um, we'll talk again next week. Okay, take care. Bye for now. Thank you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Hello, Cam. Sorry I was late. I was waiting for Paul. <laughs> well, you know, I had to push him off um, so I could get to your call because, you know, it's far more important. Whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, the topic for discussion tonight is the failure of News Hub. Is it bad? Is it good? Is it indifferent? And what do you think the media should be doing or what do you think the prospects for the mainstream media are? Well, firstly, the minute I heard the news, I started watching TV3. I should have been doing it ages ago. I feel really guilty. But the reason why, and I'm sure unlike a lot of other people, we stayed on TV1, even though it's nowhere near as good, purely because of the chase. I'm a chase fanatic. And then we sit there in our lazy boy listening to the chase, and immediately that finishes, the news starts to go, oh, well, that's it. I'll just keep listening or watching. So you're saying it's inertia that people of your advanced ages don't change the channel and that's why TV3 is folded. <laughs> I can't say that's the total reason, um, <laughs> but it's the reason why I never changed and I can only mm, make an assumption that others may have felt the same. But well, I know as I've said before, I, the minute I knew they were... Yeah. Go ahead. No, well, it's like that in radio. Right? There's... If, you know, News Talk ZB has a massive audience, and that's a legacy from when the, when the state owned those um, audiences or, or those stations. They had 1ZB, 2ZB, all of those. Well, they all got amalgamated into News Talk ZB. It became a private organisation, but nobody changed the dial. And so when MediaWorks started up Radio Live and then Today FM and you know, Magic or whatever, all of the three that they've started that ultimately failed, they failed because of inertia yep. in some respect, but also because they were a poor facsimile of what everyone was used to. And as a consequence, uh, there was no movement of viewership. Now, I can remember sitting in the lounge of mum and dad's place when TV3 started. We were all there to watch TV3 start with the you know, little logo and everything coming up on the screen. I remember that uh, those days. But they haven't really progressed. I mean, I don't think they've ever made a profit. Now, I don't know about you, but there's not many businesses, if you don't make a profit, you can continue on for 30-odd years. Tell me about it. Yeah. I think um, um, there's so many options now. A lot of people, the young people in particular, watch everything on their, I don't know, phone, pad, or whatever, and uh, less people are actually watching TV. I think it's yeah, us I mean, oldies I, that are, are adherents of it. Yeah, well, I I do tend not to watch what I, what's called lineal TV, where you, you know you you start at the news at six o'clock and then something else at seven and then something else after that and something else after that. I consume my television in bite sized chunks. I usually watch two or three episodes of a series that I'm enjoying, and um, I t turn the television off for the rest unless I'm watching cricket or. Um, some sort of sport or something like that. But I don't consume the news uh, because, frankly, it's not news. It's uh, propaganda, as Paul said. And it's often, f you know, four or five days after the fact when I actually read the news somewhere else. And uh, they don't cater to, to the audience. I, sometimes I wonder whether I'm going mad. I go, I've heard that. Where did I hear that? And then the next um, item comes on. Oh, man, I know about that. Jeez. And I'm thinking, where did I hear that? You're right. It's um, regurgitated over and over again. 
I mean, yeah. you, you think how bad it is for TV3. What about newspapers? Would you like to own the Herald newspaper chain right now? No, I not, think not. not not particularly. You know, it's a, it's a, literally a sunset industry and the sun setting. And uh, these media yeah. types are all sitting there like this is a new revelation when we've actually known that this is the demise of this is going to happen for years. I mean, you know, you used to get uh, videos out from a video shop and then DVDs and then they're all gone. Well, why are they all gone? Because oh, yeah. it was a sunset industry that failed to adapt. And so, you know, Netflix and other streaming options came along. So we've got TV and Z sitting yep. there producing things in a lineal form. We've got News Hub producing things in a lineal form and TV3. And they're sitting there going, oh, but everybody gets their information elsewhere. Well, well why didn't you change? You know, it, why didn't uh, it's 10 years since I actually sat down with Mark Jennings in a in a meeting room and said, you know, unless you change, things are gonna uh, this is what's gonna happen. And it and that was yeah, that was 2014. So it's 10 years ago that I sat down and warned him of that. And in the meantime, they've done literally nothing to mitigate uh, the loss or change or adapt the way that they uh, serve their customers. But 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 in the way they serve their all, customers, they gaslight us on everything. Yeah, we're all a lot lazier now. Um, I sit there in the chair thinking, oh, will I go to what's on the net, what's on next? I'll look at my iPad, look at Sky and say, oh, okay, nothing. Oh, I'll go to Netflix. Then my Apple Watch says, you've been sitting too long, time to stand. Oh, and I go, oh. Whereas before Netflix and so forth, I might have stood up, even if it was to put a video in the video player. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you're right. We consume things differently, and these media companies haven't changed. You know, they, they just have not adapted fast enough, and they're literally like the buggy whip manufacturers clamoring for government support to maintain their business when everybody else is actually out there driving Fords, um, Model T Fords or something similar. Yep. We hate change, and I tell you what, another phenomenon, when I have an acquaintance around or two, and it comes 6 o'clock, next minute, we better watch the news. So then I go, oh, which news um, channel do you want? Oh, we watch one. So whatever I'm watching, we have to go to one. Now, it's not it's just one person that's done that. It's quite a lot of people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah, come saying. on, Jack, put your foot down. You know, no, we're watching my news, and we're going to get it from here. It's your place. <laughs> yeah, but the point I'm making is people hate change. Yeah. They get used to one thing. I can remember I was really looking forward to Paul Holmes starting on 1ZB, and I was there on day one. Yeah. And thinking, what's this all about? And it became a phenomenon, this talkback radio thing. A huge and phenomenon. And progressed now you know. through to motor mouth. Yeah, well, now you're on a talkback show um, that I'm hosting. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Jack. Thanks for your <laughs> contribution, and we'll talk again next week. Right, see you, Cam. Bye. Thanks, bye. Welcome to Cam's buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back. G'day, Cameron. You good this week again? Always good, mate. And even if I'm not, I'll just lie to you. <laughs> now, what do you got for me this week, mate? There's a lot happening. Well, speaking of liars, you would have, you being a complete media junkie. Uh, you would have uh, seen the news that uh, News Hub is closing down in June or July or something like that. It can't be soon enough. What are your thoughts on that? And uh, what do you think the prospects are for other mainstream media that are out there? Well, they're all too woke and they've got no audience and uh, they're going broke. And that's just what's happened. And I can't believe News Hub's lasted this long. It's been perilously close to bankruptcy for ages, even when TV3 had it. But... I know plenty of people over 70 who have completely tuned out of the news and newspapers where they used to do daily. They just don't view it at all. It's just too work. It's just a completely different product than what they want to consume. So they go elsewhere. And all these sort of linear TV stations are buggered anyway because who watches pre-prescribed time television? Every, everyone I know watches on demand. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Um, Paul was so saying... That... Up, it's just... It's a... yeah. Sorry. You were saying? Yeah. Well, oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, it's just uh, it's just a it's a motor car revolution for the buggy carriages, right? It's just that's all it is. Exactly. I mean, I was talking yeah. to Paul earlier, and he said, you know, I'm just sick of watching the news and being told, you know, complete rubbish and being told, you know, being gaslit effectively 
that um, men can have babies and can breastfeed. And uh, he said, everyone that I know um, thinks that that's uh, rubbish. And so they're not going to you know, entertain any organization that tells us and gaslights us on completely insane stuff like, you know, safe and effective or climate change, the science is settled or any other uh, topic that you care to mention. You can almost guarantee that the that news hub or the, the mainstream news media in New Zealand will give an opposite view of what the majority of Kiwis think. Yeah, they live in way too much of a bubble. And the only people surprised that they're going broke are the journalists themselves. Tova O'Brien, you know, left TV3, started a woke TV station that was predicted to take down another opposition of yours. Not even close to it. Gone. You know, just no, just... And now she's at... Stuff and it probably won't even last a year. So these guys, they just live in some sort of bubble. I, I just can't understand it. They, yeah, I don't t- get it. They just it's can't. Not just, it. It's not just Tover O'Brien. I mean, you look at um, the way Gina Lynch has carried on since the news happened, and it's like she's blaming the government because they didn't bail them out. You know, well, why didn't they just get better? Why didn't they change? Why didn't they actually represent what their viewers think instead of trying to tell us? A whole bunch of rubbish and gaslight us on all sorts of issues. What you know, as I said, also to um, to to another caller, you know, um, trust is something that is is valuable in a media organisation. It's something that should be nurtured and cherished and protected. And as soon as that trust is gone, and you can, you can look at trust in any sort of you know relationship, um, whether it's a customer relationship or a personal relationship, as soon as trust is gone. It's gone. It doesn't come back. It's and they, they, very they, hard to get back. Yeah, but by becoming the propaganda wing of the Ardern regime, everyone lost trust <laughs> in the me- in the media. I mean, you can't describe it any other way. I mean, how else can you describe it when the Prime Minister is standing there uh, telling us that she's the single source of truth and then says, oh, okay, the first question, go to Tova and then Jessica and then Tova, Jessica, Jessica, Tova, Backwards and forwards it went with the favourites. Why would we trust them? But I think there's a wider problem here, and it's a lot of it's to do with um, the Arden regime, where people have lost a lot of trust in our, our institutions, which used to be neutral, mutually political. You know, like the police mm. or the health workforce. You know, the national vaccine numbers are in massive decline, whereas previously they, you know, they were always getting reasonable. You know, whereas people have just completely lost trust in looking to other sources, and it's a real big problem. I mean, do you trust our judiciary? No. Do you trust our police to no. back, back you? No. Yeah, exactly, and that's a big problem. Arden did so much damage to our country. Well, when she set up the, <laughs> the um, Public Interest Journalism Fund, that just turned them all into bribed propagandists on behalf of the regime. They yeah, prescribed... Well, it came with conditions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It came with conditions, and the conditions were if you didn't agree to this, you didn't subscribe to it, A, you yeah. wouldn't get the money, or B, if you changed, then we'd ask for the money back. I, I don't know how they can describe that as not a bribe. Winston's dead spot on about that, but the, the media fight him and say that he's wrong, and they might even conspire to stop reporting his comments. Did you see that? Yeah, but these are the same media who they tell us men can have babies. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So how does it pan out? How did, how... Well, I hope it pans out <laughs> in catastrophic failure and then uh, out of the ashes will come more nimble, uh, more customer-focused organisations, you know, like us at Reality Check Radio. I mean, you know, our audience numbers are growing. People like what we're, um, what we're producing. Uh, they're dipping into their own pockets to fund it. We're not expecting the taxpayer to fund us. We're not applying for any government grants or anything like that for Reality Check Radio. Uh, we are surviving on the basis that we're looking after our uh, audience yep. in many diverse ways. And that doesn't mean having, you know, a, a monoculture of, of what we're, you know, allowed to talk about. I can talk about support for Israel. Another host can t- talk about support for Palestine. Um, that means we're covering it all the angles. Uh, you know, we let our guests talk. 
Uh, we're not interrupting them. We're not machine gunning them. You know, we're not trying to to defeat them at every opportunity. We just want to listen to what people, callers like yourself or, or others, have to say. And that's what people like. Well, I think you're definitely having some success because I noticed some comments in the mainstream media about Reality Check Radio being conspiracy radio and questioning why MPs are allowed to go on it. It's because they're obviously we're hurting them. alarmed. You're hurting we're t- them. And they're we're, we're taking, fighting. We're taking their audience away from them. And instead of uh, saying, well, actually, I'm losing my audience here, um, I need to change or adapt or do something like that or understand what the audience wants to hear. They sit there and wag the finger at the audience and go, don't go there. Those people are crazy. Those people are nuts. And and we're all sitting there thinking, actually, no, you you guys are the ones who are crazy. You guys are the ones who are nuts. And we're going to go and listen to Reality Check Radio because we hear both sides of the argument. You know, you've got people like, you know, Rodney Hyde and I don't see eye to eye on anything almost but we happily coexist in a, in a radio station in a media space where where all differences are welcomed. You know, Paul Brennan and I don't agree on absolutely everything. That's just the way it is. Yeah, but you shouldn't agree with everyone on everything. You know, no, otherwise you just exactly. work in a bubble, and that's what the stupid mainstream media has done to themselves, and they've just, just destroyed themselves. And they, and they're surprised at that because the bubble's so powerful. Yeah, so, and, and you know, I can I talk about what I want on my show. And and Rodney and Paul and all the other hosts, they can talk about what they want on their show. There's no editorial um, finger wagging. There's no agreed policy position like stuff has with climate change, for instance. Um, there's none of that. <laughs> there's no woke agenda in this station. That's for sure. You know, in fact, we're anti woke. Well, keep up the good work, Cameron. It's obviously working. I um. How do you think this plays out in a wider sense? We have an American election at the end of the year and you're potentially lining up where both sides aren't going to accept the result of the election. You know, we, we certainly, because of social media, we're certainly becoming more tribal. Yeah, the polarisation you know, is a bad thing. Side. Yeah, it is. We, we should all hate politicians of both sides. But no, we, yeah. we're getting to this position where no matter what politicians say on either side, their side will support it and See, hate whatever the, the other side says. And I, just, I don't think that's healthy, eh? That's the greatest gift that Nikki Hager gave me. He divorced me from party politics. It made me criticise all the parties. That's why I get National Party people screaming at me that I should be supporting Luxon when I think he's an idiot. So you know, I, I think he's the David Brent of New Zealand politics. <laughs> oh, he's trying to cut all the soft centre. You know this. You've been around long enough. You know this. You can't. Not cuddle the soft centre to keep power, mate. It's just no. I think you just you should just cuddle common sense, and people will will agree with you if they see someone who's doing something and it doesn't look authentic. And let me tell you, just about every time Christopher Luxon opens his mouth or does something, it's inauthentic. It's it's massaged. It's he is a genuinely inauthentic politician, eh? Yeah, and it shows even taking that money, which. It just looks so bad. Well, you know, like- you know if that, he had two ways to play that, and he didn't play either of them. That one way is to go, oh, no, terribly sorry, um, da-da-da. He dug in, and then he reversed it, which is the worst thing you can do with vacillation. <laughs> it show, just shows weakness, you know. He was reverse ferreted by the media, and now they know if you just give him a bit of pressure, he caves. Or you could have taken my approach yeah, and yeah. say, stuff you, every other um, MP uh, gets uh, recompense for their accommodation, and I am too. And I don't care what you think, and that would have been the end of the story. But no, he goes well, for the soft centre. Uh, let's go and hug um, his way out of the problem. And it just made him worse, and it made him look weak. <laughs> uh, looks at, makes our mates like Seymour and Winston look good, though, doesn't it? Um, oh, yeah. So. Look, Luxon was away on Tuesday um, over in Australia, and uh, and Winston Peters was was in the house, and he just tore Hipkins apart. And then uh, Marima Davidson <laughs> tried to have a go, and he just, just batted that away too. I mean, you can't beat the old silver fox. And David Seymour's smart as well. He just needs to curb his um, sometimes supercilious jokes that he likes to play. But, uh, yeah, I think you're right. Um, Christopher Luxon's making David Seymour and Winston Peters uh, look like absolute geniuses. 
Well, is there any more genuine politicians than Winston and, and David at the moment? They both say what they believe. They're both doing exactly what they said they'd do. Is it genuinely genuine? And well, Shane Jones would be in there. Shane Jones was in there. Oh, I mean, he's an, he announced on Tuesday that he's going to um, introduce legislation to overturn the oil um, and gas ban. So you know, he's a poli- he's a politician uh, who who just speaks his mind, and we need more politicians like that who just speak truth. And uh, and you know, it doesn't he doesn't care whether the uh, media are upset um, by that. You know, I imagine they're all furiously tapping away on their keyboards about how terrible it is for the environment that we're going to drill for our own oil and gas instead of importing it? Well, resources provide our, you know, our wealth and our way of life. You know, we're in a big international resource market. If we give it up, you're just giving up what you have, you know. You can't have world-class health care and education and transport and, you know, so on if you don't make the wealth and we get it from natural resources, you know. So good on Shane. That's excellent news. Anyway, that's well, about my rant this week, Cameron. And, yep, and we'll talk again next week. Thanks for calling in, Jimmy. Thank you. See you. No holding back there. Plenty of truth bombs dropped if only the other media would listen. I'm so blessed to have such a great bunch of mates and new buddies to share anything with, and they're so wise and speak common sense. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's Buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you, so connect with us today.